Welcome to the Tape Library. Tonight I have two brand new real life ghost stories to share with you. First, we're going to be exploring another encounter with a shadowy figure. Then we have a paranormal experience from a security guard who has a lot of stories to share. So make yourself a hot drink, dim the lights, and we'll get into it. Case 1. So my whole life I've had minor experiences with the paranormal. Things like hearing someone say my name, or footsteps when I'm alone in the house, or at work. However, I've had two bigger experiences, and this is the scary one. I'm a 40 year old female. When I was around 20, my parents rented a house and let me take over the basement. My parents room along with my sister's room and an office were on the second floor with the living room. We had no issues when we first moved in or for the first few months, which I truly believe was because a friend of mine was staying with me in the basement. After she was kicked out of her house, she stayed with us only while she was able to get her own place. However, as soon as she left, I began waking up about 2am every night and seeing a dark shadow across the room. At first, I thought maybe it was my eyes playing tricks on me and just tried to ignore it. Around this time though, I began to get a bad feeling down there and started spending more time upstairs when just hanging out at home. I was working at a pub, and so I would often be home during the day alone, while my parents were at work, and my sister was in school. It was at this time I started hearing footsteps walk up and down the hallway on the second floor, which I later found out my mum would hear if she was home alone as well. But whatever was upstairs felt peaceful. Now this is when it gets a little scary. I started to realise that the dark figure I would see at night was getting closer. I didn't notice right away because it would just stand there. But each night it was about one step closer than the night before. Now looking back I probably should have moved into the office upstairs when it got to my bed. But I didn't. The last night I stayed in the basement, I woke up to this black shadow on top of me. I felt as though I could not breathe, and I started to panic, while at the same time I could not move at all. It was terrifying. It felt like it lasted forever, and yet it was most likely only a few minutes. I took my blanket and pillow, ran up the stairs and slept on the couch in the living room. The next morning when my mother woke up, saw me sleeping on the couch, she asked me why. When I told her what happened, she looked pale, like all the blood drained from her face. Then she told me that at the same time, she and my dad, who is very much a non-believer, had a similar experience, only strangely not as scary, more like a warning. We only used the basement for storage after that. To this day we think whatever was upstairs was trying to warn my parents of what was happening to me downstairs. Recently I came across someone online who has had a lot of terrifying experiences with the paranormal. So much so that I'm going to be dedicating an entire episode of the tape library to four of their most haunting experiences very soon. As a little tease, I wanted to share one of their other encounters tonight. Case number two. Recently, my security company started providing 24-hour services for a recreational marijuana establishment, and I worked a handful of evening and overnight shifts here. Early this week, being May in Colorado, there was a thick fog resulting from a brief cold spring rain earlier that night. On this night I was working, midnight to 8am, and the area was relatively void of vehicle traffic or foot traffic. At around 3 in the morning, 
tired, cold and bored. I walk to the gas station that shares a general proximity to my site. The fog was rolling in and out, and at times thicker than normal fog patches. The clerk of the gas station, thrilled that a non-intoxicated person had come in, began chatting. She was a generally polite lady, just talked a mile a minute. Due to her little contact with sober or paying customers, since I could see the majority of the property from the front doors of the gas station, I decided to stick around for a few minutes longer and continue our conversation while we smoked a cigarette and I drank my warm coffee. Within two or three long dry drags of my cigarette, a sheet of fog rolled down the hill as well as the highway. Both fog clouds ended up clashing in the street in front of both properties. The fog danced heavily back and forth in the street for several minutes. At times the opposite side of the street was vanished behind the thick grey mist, with quick broken breaks where flashes of the opposite side of the street became visible. Nearly finishing my cigarette, the gas station clerk and I saw the crosswalk signal change on our side. Unable to see whom was coming, we paid little attention. Halfway through the light cycle, when the flashing hand signalling began, we saw a rough outline of a person, but nearly no features. By nearly no features, I mean we saw a head with a face that was heavily shadowed from the streetlight and shoulders. With no warning, the streetlight changed. Changed, like there was never anyone who pressed the crosswalk button and just cycled normally as it does every so often. Still in the street, standing in the middle of the eastbound through lane, closest to our curb, the figure stopped and froze. Thinking it may have been a narcotics user, the frequency area was possibly tripping, and he yelled out, Get out of the street, bud. As the last syllable left my lips, a blaring horn from a semi ringing out from just up the street. The driver, with little time to react, began standing on his brake, in the hope he would stop in time. The clerk beside me began screaming. As I threw my nearly empty drink to the ground and ran towards the street, panic rang from the driver and clerk, not being able to think between both hollering. The road is wet, I couldn't stop in enough time. Please tell me he's okay. The driver began shouting. As the clerk was repeatedly yelling, I called 911. I quickly pulled my flashlight from my belt and began searching for what I assumed would have been a mangled corpse. But to my dismay, no person was anywhere around or under the semi. I then began shining on the grill, scanning every inch. And there was no damage, no blood, no body. The driver now collected, yet also confused, asked, You saw me hit someone too, didn't you? Scanning both sides of the street at this point for anyone, I replied, I thought I did. The police and fire showed up shortly after, as the police and fire station for this town is very close by. After both sets of first responders searching around, the fog just disappeared. The tyre marked from the semi-truck could be seen clearly, but no blood, no person, no nothing. Angry, the police then began lecturing the gas station clerk about false reporting. But being a small town where this happened, the responding cops knew her well. At this time I stepped in, asserting into the conversation, stating that we both saw the person standing in the street but we couldn't see them well due to the thick fog. Since all three stories matched, the police and fire units left, but still thinking it was a sick joke, issued us a warning. The next night I worked the same shift, but it was more raining than foggy and misty. Just around 1.30am, when I was up and walking around the building, a nighttime supervisor with the local police stopped at the gas station. This isn't uncommon, as it's the only gas station in that town open overnight. 
but within a few minutes I hear the clerk yell from her front doors. Dan, come here quickly. I walked over to find the police shift supervisor leaning on the counter. You were here last night when the truck supposedly hit someone, right? He asked. Yes, sir. I was standing out front when we thought we saw someone get hit. With a quick flick of his wrist, gesturing to come over, he began playing a video clip on his work phone. This is the intersection camera from 15 minutes before we arrived for the 911 call. Interested, I leaned in. The camera showed a figure, barely visible from the fog, walking down off the highway ramp, just a little ways up from the crosswalk. It took about two minutes for the undefined silhouette to reach the crosswalk. Without it looking, the figure even pressed a button. The crosswalk light began to show walk. As the figure began into the street on the westbound side, the camera blanks. The officer then turned up the play screen speed. After about seven minutes of black screen time lapsed, the picture reappeared with the truck stopped in the street and my flashlight seen shining under the vehicle when the emergency lights came into view. The officer then stopped the video. We watched the clip several times. We can't explain why the feed cut out for so long like it did, but we are sure that you two thought you may have seen someone get hit by a truck, the officer said in a firm voice. He then followed. The driver claimed he was exhausted and pulling off the highway for the night. After you and him examined his truck, he thinks that the fud he heard may have been something minute and just let his mind run wild. After talking for several more minutes, I left and went back to my car. I sat there staring at the crosswalk and listened to the rain hit the roof. Did we actually see a person walk into the crosswalk? Or did a phantom cross that road? Thanks for joining me on another journey into the paranormal. As always, if you have a paranormal experience you would like me to read out, then you can find my email in the description. If you enjoyed tonight's stories, then please subscribe, so you don't miss out on future tales. That's all for this entry. Until next time, sweet dreams.